Hi, everybody, and welcome to Conversations with Friends. I'm Meredith, and uh, I like to think you're my friend as well, so we can have a, a conversation. In fact, I think that you can go into the chat if you'd like to say something. But anyway, okay. welcome again. And uh, I'm with the Brahma Kumaris in the, uh, in the weekly series that we do conversations with friends. And we have lots of other classes during the week on the Miami Facebook Brahma Kumaris. And speaking of friends, I actually have an old friend that I get to interview you tonight. An old, not in age, but old in terms of we go back a long time, right? Yes. Welcome, Mary. Donna. And uh, you don't see Donna so much because Donna is behind the scenes, right? You are behind the scenes in the kitchen cooking. Right. You are considered and loved because you do all the cooking at the center and you have been for many years. And many of our public gatherings that we've had over the years, you are the one in charge of cooking and, and making all the food, but you do something quite different. And it has to do with the title of tonight is Enlightened Cooking. So tell me a little bit about your philosophy of enlightened cooking and how you do prepare food for, for people. Well, enlightened cooking doesn't take place on the, in the oven or on, on the stove, okay? It begins as a process where the first step is going to, is selecting your recipe. The second step is going to the grocery store and picking out the best possible products that you can to make the recipe really work. And you're very confident about what you've selected. The other option that you have, which I just recently did this myself, is have a garden. And you use things from the garden, although the center has a big garden. Uh, but I just put one in my terrace, on my terrace, <laughs> and, and it's like very, it's very special to me. It's much better to me than getting something from the grocery store. So, oh, so you, you feel like getting it from your garden? Yeah, cause, because you're, nur you're nourishing the plants as, as seedlings. Okay, so they're starting from seedlings, and then they sprout. And you're watching them sprout and it just makes you so overwhelmed. So the vibrations are going in there to begin with, you know? And then, it, whereas if you go into a grocery store, you're picking up fruits and you don't know the consciousness they put them on, on, you know, on display with. And so to me, it's more important to get that vibration constantly, especially in these times. Yeah. You know, that we should have really good vibrational foods and, and picked and nurtured. And because once they're nurtured, you, they know, first you nourish them, then you nurture them. And then, and then you have the finished product, you know, and that's the amazing thing. I haven't gotten to the finished product yet, but still. Well, you'll get there soon. I, I have had <laughs> organic gardens many, many years ago. I don't even think I know how to do it now. It's been so many years, but there was nothing like picking your own vegetables out of the garden, yeah. whether it's a pot outside or going out at night and getting your feet all soiled up and dirty and in the garden was like an incredible experience and picking something like a, a green pepper or zucchini, which grows so much bigger when you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So I know that feeling. So maybe somebody will be out there and they will hear what you have to say and uh, they'll go out and start a garden. But Okay, let's say we're not all maybe at that level yeah, right now. Right. So then, okay, like, we're, we're still going to the vet to, to you know, the, the stores, the grocery stores, and getting, picking our food at the grocery store. So, let's talk about this idea of this, um, this what you talk about vibration. Uh, a vibration has to do with so that the effect of your mind, of your nurturing, and your feeling is actually, a, it's actually affecting the food itself. From, from the vegetable in the supermarket Absolutely. to when you cook at home. Yes, okay, so the first thing is you make your list for the supermarket. You go into the supermarket and you pick out the best you can buy, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then um, once you have that, you start preparing your recipe. Mm -hmm. But the whole time you're in yoga, your mind is in yoga and it's connected with the supreme, with the supreme being 
Mm -hmm. And um, it's like, what you want to do with this food is you want to make it a healing food. And sometimes when you want to do a healing food or you want to do a special consciousness in the food, you have to do it and know that you're, you can't do it completely alone. You can't do it 100% alone. You need extra help. And that's where the Supremes gives me a lift, okay? I because it's, it's the magic power I get from that that goes into my hands. Mm. That's so you're talking about divine energy or, yes. uh, or yeah. just something higher, like we say, you know, supreme soul, supreme energy, whatever it is right. you, know, you could call the higher power. Right. Working through and, you and you're working through it. I see. And so as you're cooking, you're actually connecting. Are you also maybe meditating on a theme or like, not a theme, but, but a word like maybe just being relaxed and peaceful and that kind of thing as well? Is that what you do personally? Well, or? I, I, I just try and keep the atmosphere very pure. And mm -hmm. so when I, when, I, when I mean pure is that like, I don't answer the phone when I cook. Okay. I keep yeah. the energy in the kitchen going and mm. I don't want any distractions. Mm. And so I just keep it going at a pace. And then it, sooner or later, it's almost like you're lost in the experience. Wow. You, you're like, your hands are moving, you're moving, you're getting it all put together. And that, but there's something helping you and you know that you feel it. It's beautiful. I mean, I think there's a lot of people if they're watching or they hear this and it's like, well, that's not my kitchen because often a person rushes in from work and they're stressed, right? Or they've got the TV going on. They want to watch the news while they're cooking. Mm -hmm. Kids are running around, dogs are barking, right? I mean, that's, I think most people's kitchens. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, you, you do, you're alone, you live alone and you cook alone usually. Mm -hmm. uh, how does a person do it when can they keep their mind at that level when even if there's a lot of chaos in the house? Well, I think you have to set the limits, you know, yeah. because usually there's more than a kitchen for a room in a house like that. If right. it's a family, it's like when somebody is in the quick kitchen cooking, I think people need to consider that more important than anything else, mm -hmm. because that's the thing that are going to go into people that are going to make them peaceful it's going to make them, um, uh, cl a cleanliness is going to happen inside of them. You know, it's, it's, it's very special. And I think at this particular time, at, yeah. you know, whether it's towards the end of the pandemic or whatever it is, you know, I think that we all need that strength. And it's so important to keep that strength in the kitchen no matter what. And, and there shouldn't be any arguments in a kitchen. There shouldn't be any of that in a kitchen. And that's why I maybe set the, set the limits. It's very interesting to me because uh, I remember, uh, I'm just going to share my personal story it was many years ago. Uh, there was someone staying in my house and uh, she did some cooking and she said, Oh, I can cook for you, but I always like to cook for myself, my own food. And, uh, I remember that when I tasted her food and I knew that she got angry a lot and I knew that the food didn't taste right to me. And I always, after that, I said, no, thank you. She's a very nice person. And she was just there temporarily. But uh, I remember saying, no, thank you. I'll do the cooking, you know, at least for myself, but if she could cook for herself because anger or being upset, it, that, that's what you're talking about. The vibration goes into the food. Absolutely, we need a, we need a cleansing right now. We all need a cleansing. Yeah, and, and and the best way to do it is being careful on how food is prepared and what you're using. You know, mm -hmm. and I guess you have to think of it like that that seed that turns right. into a sprout, that turns into a plant. You know, but they can't do that without making effort, and of course, they can't make their own effort. Yeah. We have to make the effort for them. And in making the effort for them, we make the effort for us. And then we get the help. Yeah. Make it happen. Mm, beautiful. You know, what's interesting to me that, uh, well, when you, you know, because again, we go back a long time 
you weren't always a chef. <laughs> I think when you started coming to the meditation center, you said that you could hardly cook, right? It's like amazing. I cook, what but happened? There, but there was a meditation center that I belonged to. Okay, student, okay. another teacher, student taught you how to cook. Yeah. So you didn't grow up cooking. It's not like it was always your hobby. You uh, found it later in life. Water. I couldn't even boil, boil water. Wow. So obviously you took to it, right? You took yeah. to it very quickly. Did you fall in love with cooking? Is it something? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I love it. I really do. Um, and you have to like it when you do it. Otherwise, you know. Yeah. Is it also, I mean, I see how when you cook, uh, like you say, no matter what's going on, you could be cooking for three people or you're cooking for 30 people. You do not get stressed. You're just... What's the secret to that? I mean, you say you stay connected, but you know, 30 people are waiting for you to eat, waiting, they're waiting to eat. Well, they, and uh, isn't that pressure? For me, it's pressure. You yeah, know? But, but you know, when you say being connected and 30 people are waiting, it's like, yeah. it'll be fine. <laughs> Beautiful. It'll be fine, you know, and it usually yeah. is. And it usually is. I want to say that uh, you are a vegetarian cook. I'm not sure if I mentioned that at the beginning of the program. You're a vegetarian cook, uh, moving toward vegan, just about vegan most of the time. At the center, you cook vegan. And so, um, you know, there's a big movement now, isn't there, for vegetarian, vegan food. It's, it's, it's changed a lot, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. it? It's a healthier diet. Yeah. It is. It's a healthier diet. I think it's for the times too, mm. changing times. What recommendation do you have for people? I mean, when I started being a vegetarian, like over 35 years ago, I mean, people thought I was really weird, right? You know, there were people out there you'd meet, but not very many. Now it seems like people, at least if they're not a vegetarian, they're more vegetarian friendly, right? Something has changed. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there's... There's something, you know, going on and not just in America, but on our planet where people do recognize uh, that this is really important in terms absolutely. of. Absolutely. And there is, um, there are all kinds of chemicals that are going into food that weren't there before. And yeah. uh, the freshness um, in, in fresh foods like produce, mm -hmm. you don't know what's in there anymore. You know, uh -huh. you don't know what's in there anymore. And so it's like, you have to make a choice. For right. yourself and who you cook for, mm -hmm. so it's becoming. I think it's a it's a it's a movement in sorts to be a vegetarian or at least clo as close as you vegan. can be. I mean, it's right. like there's a consciousness connected with that as well. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. and also you know here it is. This is Earth Day week, and uh, you know a lot of people know this, but a lot of people don't know this that just by becoming a vegetarian, you're, you are contributing to the healing of the earth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like you are help, you're giving back to the earth instead of taking from the earth. Yeah, exactly. And, so, and we're gaining something by going more towards the earth, you know? Yeah. And you do, you find that you feel more connected to the earth when you, when you just do eat vegetables and fruits and, well, you know. right. <laughs> When I have my flower pots in front of me, I don't feel connected to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I'm doing something. I'm, I'm doing something, you know? And I'm, I'm getting, like, maybe salads out of what's on my terrace, you know? Right. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not cooking everything from yeah. the terrace, but I hope, you you know, maybe you'll get there. Like, I mean, the I don't think so has, on a terrace. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, the center yeah. is garden and everything and in terms of economics i mean if you want to save some money it's definitely a lot of money if you're it, it, growing you know, your more than anything it's how yeah. that stuff tastes yeah you know, how the stuff tastes when, when we pick something from the center it's like so fresh We're yeah the so tasting <laughs> produce that has been there forever and sprayed with god only knows what but um when you yeah. get fresh it's like Oh my God, you can really taste the green. Mm. It's refreshing. It's, you know, it's yeah. Like but you still go to the supermarket, right? I of mean, course. Can yeah, I can't get everything. You know? Right. Yeah. I can't get tofu. I'm not going to make tofu yet. <laughs> right. 
what do you say to people who just say, oh, you know, sometimes people say to me, it's so hard for me. You know, people say this, it's so hard. I want to be a vegetarian or I want to be a vegan, but I just can't do it. What, what advice do you have for them? Well, first I would ask why they can't do it. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Good and, and if it's, it, you know, if the taste or if it's a certain kind of food they like that they can't get the flavor, um, from experience, I'll say that I think I could copy anything Italian and make it vegetarian or vegan. Wow. You know, I mean, yeah, uh, even Chinese. <laughs> so if you have these desires for certain foods, you can, you can duplicate. Adapt it. Right. Adapt it. Yeah. There's so many foods even out there, and I'm not, you're not necessarily recommending people go buy, you know, prepared foods, but there are so many vegetarian foods that have become just like, you know, for people that feel like they need a burger once in a while, you can get the veggie burgers, or mm -hmm. it is there for people, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. which makes a big difference. And so for you, this is kind of, uh, would you say it's like a way of life for you, cooking, and connect is that your way too in a sense of connecting with other souls with people because you have a relationship people are very happy i see when they eat your food donna you know does that affect your life that um make you it makes me feel good yeah you know, i don't know if it affects my life i mean but uh -huh. it makes me feel good and I, yeah. I feel like i did something you know uh -huh. that, that i helped someone somewhere I mean, yeah. there was a time when I, um, I went to see a friend of mine on Miami Beach, and that's when I was selling burgers at the time. Right. I was yeah. making uh, whole food burgers, and I was selling them. And so I made him two bunches of food, uh, of burgers. It was my burgers, and it was this guy that was, you know, working with me, okay? <laughs> and I said, try these two, two, two of these burgers and tell me which one you like. And so he said, I'll tell you right now, which one is yours? And I hmm. went, which one? <laughs> and he said, the mushroom is yours. The black bean is your friend. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, but he could tell the difference because yeah. you did the cooking with your vibration yeah. and your energy. So if you could give people just some advice for starting this process. Oh, we didn't mention something else. The meditation you do before you serve the food. Yeah. And after. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. and after. Okay, well. Yeah, first I sit, before I start the food itself, yeah. um, I sit maybe for 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. and just get myself centered and get, you know, just get into the, the groove. I get into uh -huh. the groove of cooking. Yeah. And, um, and I walk into the kitchen in that, in, in that, you know, in that state of mind. And if I had been out shopping first, I take a yeah. shower when I get home. So it's mm. come all clean. Mm. I just don't start cooking from the, the store. I see. Right. Never, ever, ever. You know, you I like to get rid of that stuff. Mm, mm. Whatever's outside. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And then after, before you serve the food, maybe explain the Brahma Kumari way. Well, after it's all cooked, I put some in a little dish and I meditate over the dish. And yeah. um, it's like, we're, at that point, it's like um, giving all I have of that mm -hmm. energy into the food mm -hmm. um, to a point where it feels sometimes where um, like a light, like a light thing, you know, it's a, a light, a light experience over the food, L-I-G-H-T, mm. not L-I-T-E. <laughs> yeah. And then- Yeah, um, L-I-G-H-T, light. Yeah. yeah, light, yeah. And um, and it becomes, you know, and you know when it's, you know when it's, when it's done, it's like, I can't explain it. I really can't explain it and give it justice, but you made some kind of a, um, a communion thing with mm. something much larger than you, mm. you know, and, and the food is ready. The food is ready. Mm. You, know? you just know, you just know when it's over. So it's really, it's, it's just really a whole spiritual attitude toward food. Absolutely. And I think, as you said, the world needs more spirituality 
and more healing. And so whatever we can do, as you say, in peace, eating the food, I mean, preparing the food is doing something for our own soul, for ourselves as souls and doing something for the planet because we're contributing. You're contributing all this love and positive energy when you prepare the food and you and you give the food to others and it's just a beautiful thing yeah it's so like it's almost like you feel that you you know that you get gifted the uh, food gets gifted you know yeah. it's like a, a clean thing the food is you know gets a cleanliness it's, i i can't explain it yeah but, well I, I i'm you know I, yeah. as again i've known you for a long time but i'm feeling whatever you're saying here i think that people understand what it is that you're saying making the food and the process sacred it's a sacred mm -hmm. no absolutely thing yeah yeah and you do that so beautifully i wanted you to share one more thing before we go to a little meditation okay we'll do a few minute meditation which is how you became a vegetarian you work for some people maybe if you don't mind mentioning that were vegetarians and that kind of pushed you into being a vegetarian. What happened? And who were they? They kind of you pushed know. me. <laughs> yes, they did. Um, I was working for Robin and Dwina Gibb as a personal yeah. assistant and uh -huh. all of their business things and stuff kind of things. And then um, when I started working for them, Dwina said to me, uh, well, you can either eat here every day for free, or you yeah. can go out and eat whatever you want, but don't bring the food into the house. <laughs> so I said, no, I'll eat here, not a problem, because I'm <laughs> a macrobiotic chef. And so I started with macrobiotic mm. many, many years ago, because I'm oh. like a vegetarian for like 25 years, and then about a year uh -huh. or two as a vegan. Uh huh. I, let's say a year, a year is more accurate. Yeah. So look at the part that they played in helping you to become a vegetarian. But, you know, it, it just shows the effect that people can have on one's life. You know, you meet someone, you're connected to them. And, and I, I don't know, I, I guess I feel that people at least can try. You know, it's not like we're trying to push anything on anybody, but just be open to this whole idea of just eating food from, you know, from the earth, but also giving to the earth, not hurting the earth. And you really feel connected to the planet and you, and you feel like you are doing something to help heal. And you're, to reverse and you're, you're acknowledging the earth as well. Right, right. And, and, and going into a higher power. Yeah. You don't become the higher power. The higher, the, the higher power comes and helps you. <laughs> yeah. And you feel it. You, it's like you yeah. said, it's a, it's a vibe. But the it's thing is, if you really want to do that, the effort has to come from you. Mm -hmm. you can't, it can't just you can't just think it's going to happen over you know right you have or, to prove that you're really sincere about it you know yeah for yourself yeah and i think more and more people are be, are doing it i mean they are and especially i notice very young people are just it seems like they're being born and they don't want to eat meat and they they're just born like that today and i find it very interesting that it's no longer a weird thing it's very common with you know, a lot of people that are a lot younger. Mm -hmm. So let's end on some meditation. Okay. And I'll just say a few words, but we'll do it kind of in silence. And just let me now just go inside myself and feel the peace within me. Let me feel what it's like to just get away from the world, get away from talk, from action, and just experience myself as a soul, a bright, beautiful soul, light, light within me, in the center of my forehead, inside my head, to just feel myself as this beautiful, radiant, bright light. And as I sit here in peace, and I sit here in silence, I experience myself in a different way, a new and different way. I'm not just the physical or the material or the body. I am the spiritual being 
And as I move through life, I can connect with other spirits and see everybody as spiritual, as my brother, as my sister. And I feel the love and the acceptance of all. And the more that I'm able to do this, the more peace that I feel within, the more, the easier that life becomes because I've ended the struggle. I don't need to struggle. I don't need to have difficulties in life. I can just go beyond and just be a peaceful, loving, spiritual being. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. So Om Shanti to you all out there. And Donna, this was fun. Uh, it's, it's always, always fun to be Don. <laughs> Don is just a great soul, a great being, a being of light and love. And uh, she loves everyone and everybody loves her. And I wish you could all join her one day, come to the center and uh, get to just partake of her food because it's pretty amazing vegetarian food. You'll immediately become a vegetarian. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you soon. Om Shanti. Shanti. Shanti.